Greetings, bug hunters! I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love. Subsequently, welcome to another episode of Isn't It Time? Aliens, being the chronicles of human interaction with a species known as xenomorphs. Predator, being the chronicles of the brutal Yatja and their interactions with humanity. Paul W.S. Anderson, a filmmaker of less than glowing renown. All of these are brought together for today's subject, Alien vs. Predator. Released in 2004, Alien vs. Predator brings the tale down to earth, introducing us to Charles Bishop Wayland, billionaire, and his team as they find an ancient temple buried underneath the Antarctic ice. Director Paul W.S. Anderson's reputation going before him, is this another cinematic failure, or a misunderstood magnum opus? Well, let's find out. So wrap up warmly, cause we're heading to the Antarctic for Alien vs. Predator. At a US satellite monitoring facility, a heat signature is picked up. We're then whisked across the world and introduced to our main protagonists. Once the team is assembled, they, and the audience along with them, are briefed on their mission. But Alexa isn't happy. She won't put herself in harm's way. And they're going to run into some pretty serious trouble, I can tell you. Fortunately, she decides not to abandon the expedition and lays down three simple rules. And so we step out onto Bovet Island. And I know they say Bovitoya, but it's officially Bovet Island. Bovitoya being the Norwegian pronunciation, because Norway had officially originally claimed the island. Happy Viking was available for comment, but I don't want to be reliant on cameos. Where the team discover a perfectly drilled tunnel. And proceed directly down it, and straight into the pyramid. Man, the crystal maze has nothing on this place. But oh dear. Our heroes discover the sacrificial chamber. Directly beneath it, we discover Yautja weaponry. This is where things begin to go horribly wrong. And as the main group attempt to escape, disaster strikes again. Graham and Verheiden, one of Wayland's bodyguards, get separated from the main group and traverse a maze of tunnels. And worse, the main group is thoroughly curb stomped by the predators. Ooh, nasty. But then the predators have bigger fish to fry. Undeterred, the remaining predator continues after his shoulder cannon. But Wayland has one final trick up his sleeve. Proving once again that man is the most dangerous prey of all. Not that it actually stopped the predator, but still, points for originality at least. And style. Style is always important. In a lull in hostilities, we are treated to backstory. 
Long story short, they built pyramids, sacrificed humans, hunted bugs. Much feasting if they won. And then there was one. But then a predator steps into the mix and an uneasy alliance is formed. And just in time, as the Queen calls her drones to free her. Alexa and the Predator reach the egg chamber, but there's too many facehuggers, and the Predator sets a bomb to make things right. And so our heroine becomes the last survivor and makes it back to the surface. But there's still the little matter of an alien queen to deal with. And so our movie ends with Alexa gaining a trophy and the Yautja examining a strange new hybrid. And the moral of this story? If you really must go ice raiding, always take the time to train your party. You never know what's going to happen. Anyway, is it time you gave Alien vs Predator another chance? This is a gruesome, gory film. Then again, fans of the franchise were hoping for no less. And in following the convention of aliens and making us wait to see the aliens, we're salivating for the initial face-off by the time it arrives. But really, once that happens, the story takes a back seat to spectacle. If you're looking for a gripping character piece on the dangers of untrained amateurs in Antarctica, look elsewhere. But if you're looking for a slime dripping, bug stomping, movie monster smackdown roller coaster ride, look elsewhere as well. My main problem is that the film seems to drag at times, the titular monsters being underused until well past the hour mark, and asking the audience to root for the Predators, who up until now have been the main antagonists, is a stretch. In the end though, while the pace is uneven, the climax and the bruising clash between alien drone and young Predator go a long way towards making up for it. It may not be the best that either franchise has produced, but yes, it is time you gave Alien vs Predator another chance. Just be wary of the sequel. So thanks for- <coughs> Gotcha! <laughs> thanks for watching folks. Join me next week and all the rest of it. So long.